Hi, this is Stan. Welcome back to part eight in our series, Building This Lakeside Wood Slot Car Track. Boy, today we're going to try to take this inanimate wood and metal object and bring it to life. coffeeed up this morning and kind of pooped after two straight days of braiding on this track. It was quite a colossal job. And I do want to apologize for part seven. I know it was a beast. I think it was like almost 20 minutes long. But we had so much to cover with the painting and all the braiding and I want to make sure that you saw enough of the process that you knew what was going on and a reminder that you don't necessarily have to do this commercial track braiding style you can do basically the copper tape and it's a lot easier and a lot of dudes do this on their track in fact the last wood track i did 12 years ago he had copper tape it wasn't set in dados it was just right on top of the mdf and you know what I had it at school and the kids beat up on it for years and it was fine and if it would tear or have a problem we could just get out a soldering iron and fix it. So, boy we've got a lot to do today so let's get busy. First thing is we're going to have to join up the two sections of track and I'm going to have to make sure the braid is nice and tight and pulled down and organized underneath. And then we're going to have to connect all these pieces of braid in a proper manner so that we can put power to the track and information to the computer. And sadly, I'm going to have to drill some holes in our nice driver station here. We've got to mount the wiring in here so the drivers can hook up their controllers. And Dave and I have already begun tweaking on the software. We're using a software where package called TrackMate is what our club uses. We've used it for years. This is the newest version of the software. And I got it loaded and it actually talks to my old board that I have, controlling board. So I think we're going to be okay. If not, I can back up a couple of versions of software and get it reloaded. And we're going to have to get all the gear here mounted up underneath the table and out of the way for being bumped and stuff. So this is the controller module for TrackMate. This is old school so this is an old serial port that is going to my computer. The new TrackMate boards are all USB. Here's our 9 volts in and here is the plug-in for the sensors that go out to the dead strips on the track. And then the track mate needs to turn the amperage and the power. Of course this all works on little small 5 volt signals etc. But there's a relay that we have to install and this is what kicks the high current in and out on the track which is controlled by the software. So we'll get that rigged up. So Lakeside will be a three lane track and it'll be red lane, white lane and blue lane, blue lane being the in inside lane. And I went with these colors simply because most of the tracks in our club are actually four lanes and drivers are used to coming in on the red lane and going out on the white lane. So Dave and I thought it would be best to kind of keep that pattern for the drivers. And how this works is we usually run three minute heats. So every driver to complete a race has to do three minutes on each lane and the computer keeps track of all your laps and totals it all up and does other cool stuff like registers any fast laps that you have and the computer knows if somebody else has a crash and goes through your lane making uh, your lap too short it knows to not consider that and etc etc. A lot of fun stuff in the software. Let me see if I can put it into a practice mode here. Race format. Let me go into practice. Okay. And go! 
Okay, so it's running now in a practice mode. Let me show you our little handful of electronicals here. So basically, when you heard the little voice say go, the relay would kick in and apply power to the track and the cars would be zooming off. Of course, in a practice mode, we're not really racing. We're just, uh, you know, testing and tuning the cars. So this module here is listening. And these, these little leads here, there you could hear that tone. Whenever the car closes the circuit for a moment, it's going to send a feed to the computer from the dead strip area. So we've got a lot of work ahead of us to get all this octopus of cords mounted <laughs> underneath the table. So let's get busy. I won't show you all the excruciating details, but now you can see what we're trying to do. Well, we have to fit this driver station with the connections for each of the controllers. If we have time, I may talk about the controllers either this time or next time for those that are interested. But essentially, this was from a previous track that I had. It wasn't a wood track, it was a uh, Carrera plastic track. And so, what we need for each driver is we need three terminals. And if you're curious about the wiring, I can't really explain all the wiring here, but I mentioned TrackMate. If you go to their website, you can see the circuit diagram that's necessary. Essentially, you're going to have a plus and a minus for each controller, but you also have one line that is a reversed voltage, and that allows us to have braking. We have a little rheostat, and when the car is moving mechanically but it's not being powered, the motor kind of changes its roll and it spins and it's generating voltage and so we have a reverse polarity current that goes into that motor and, and fights that tendency and so we can control how much brake we have for the cars. Similar to regenerative braking on your Tesla in your driveway where it helps to recharge the battery when the car is moving along. Or both, you know, a Tesla for you and one for the wife. And then this is a track call button. So this kills the power to the track if we have an ugly crash and people are crying and we have the ambulance to show up and stuff. So basically, what I've got to do, we're going to have three drivers. I need three small holes for these bolts. And I'm going to put two holes for the track call buttons, one here and one here. So we'll get busy on that. And there we are, three contact posts for each driver with a track call button in between. And Dave and I got these all wired up. I think that's going to look cool and be functional. Let's look quickly at the underside. Okay, there's the wiring. There's the track call button, which I've got to add some wiring to that. And I don't want to discourage you. I've wired maybe, I don't know, five or six tracks, spent a few years in between, but you got to count on at least one day of a big old mess like this where you're studying the circuit diagram and checking all the wires where they go and it's a big job. So don't underestimate the amount of time you'll need to get your track wired up if you're using a sophisticated software like TrackMate. Now, it just would not be practical for me to do the actual wiring and film all that. It's just impossible. I mean, it takes all day, really. But here you can see this is where the power feeds from the driver stations tap into the lanes. So here's our inside blue lane, middle white lane, and the red lane. And so the power taps come in here. You can see I have the two panels clamped together right now. Once I get all this done and I know where my free space is, I'll come in and put a plate on here and screw it together. 
and we'll get all this wiring all tidied up but I want to see if it all works first I don't want to staple it or screw it into place and then have to undo that if I've got some wires crossed and while we're under here you can see that's where the wiring will be for the lights remember that little uh, PVC T there and then the electrical box where the connections will be and here's a little more complicated area this is where the dead strips are so I've got wiring for the timer that keys off these dead strips and the lanes of course I'm connecting it probably that's overkill for a small track like this just the, the pinching of the braid together between the two sections is probably good enough but I wanted to just go the extra mile and just put a jumper cable here to, to keep the two lanes all tied together and I've got a positive and negative coming off the power supply and the negative feed on the power supply comes up to this terminal block here the positive feed from the power supply goes through the relay because the relay is going to be controlled by the brain and the one feed then comes off the relay into the positive side of our little bus terminal here so when the software says yeah go ahead the relay will kick in and connect the positive it's already been connected to the negative and then this is a parallel feed that goes to each driver station positive and negative to the red lane the white lane and the blue lane sorry about the wiggles here this goes to our pickups on the dead strip here's our nine volts input these low voltage lines are for the relay and the track call button and here's our interface that goes to the computer this is kind of an old school interface so I needed an adapter cord to go from the serial interface to USB to go into the computer and of course you need a separate driver for that as well so there's some shenanigans there and here's a quick look at the controller this happens to be a DeFalco controller here's your throttle this controls the shape of the curve of the throttle basically how you want the acceleration to be formatted do you want a, a slope that's slow to increase the voltage or more rapid and then this is our brake this is the amount of voltage back pressure that we're going to put in there different cars need different amounts of brake and you get your brake on this controller when the throttle trigger is completely off well I guess we can't put it off any longer this is the moment we've been waiting for I've got a little 130 second car sitting on the middle lane I got the controller hooked up everything is turned on and I don't smell any smoke or see any sparks okay the software says we're hot let's try it Woohoo! Yeah! It's alive! Alive! It's alive! It's alive! Well, I don't have any walls set up or any barrier, so I've got to be really gentle here, but I just can't wait to do a test lap. Let's go. Woohoo, there it is. And you can hear the track mate is counting the laps. It's triggering it. Let's take a quick look at the screen. All right. Not really pushing it to the limit. Like I say, I don't want anything shooting off onto the floor. But I'll bet that some of the faster cars will easily do a sub four second lap. Well, I just want to thank you so much for joining me during this build series. I'm going to call this sort of the end of our formal build 
series here on the Lakeside Track. I've got more work to do, and what I'll do is I'll give you an update when I get all these little things finished up, and we can take a final dress look at the track, and uh, eventually we'll have some racing footage. But as far as the real sequential build videos, I think I need to show some mercy and end it here. But I so want to thank you guys for sticking with me during this build. And I hope that this hasn't been a show and tell. I hope that it's been for you, if you're curious and interested about building a slot car track, that maybe this will give you a little bit of encouragement. Anyway, thank you so much, and we'll have more videos to come in the future, so I hope you'll be right here and join me next time. Go!